Hello, we're here for a second episode of our Cloud Dev Clarity podcast or show or whatever you want to call it. Um, today or in this episode, in episode two and episode three, we would like to, uh, Julie and I want to go through and inter uh, introduce ourselves uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with us. So you kind of have some context uh, around uh, who's going to be on this show. So let me bring in and say, here's Julie. That's me, and I'm not yeah. Johnny. That's no, a very no, old reference. That's a very old reference. Most people will not get that one, probably. Uh, well, I mean, hopefully a lot of people will get it, but you know, if they don't get it, then <laughs> it's, uh, it's okay. But Julie, cool. today what we're doing, or in this in this video what we're doing, is we are going to, I want you to introduce yourself to our listeners. So maybe, you know, I don't yeah, think- Yeah, we're going to do the way back machine. We're going to go exactly. all the way back. Not all the way back, because that would be too far, but let's go back to college. Let's start Ooh, there. Sweet. Oh, I got to go get my drink refilled. Um, <laughs> now, the the idea of this episode and the next one is really just so that people, if they don't know us, then this is a way for them right. to get to know us a little bit more and have a little bit more context uh, on us. And so, you know, hey, look, I, I don't expect many people to watch the next episode of Interview of Me. I don't expect very many people to watch oh. the interview of you. I mean, it's... Right. Would people, this is more for like, if you're interested to know who we are, here's right. the, here's us telling you who we are instead of you trying to go figure it out. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're looking for content, jump to episode four. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll include like links to all those social media places where we exist in the show notes. So yep. Down below. So yeah. you can uh, find us and get in touch with us if you want to. So yeah. Why don't I just sort of like, sort of actually do what I just said. So um, going in the way back machine, I went to college at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Uh, I have a degree in electrical engineering, specializing in microprocessor system design, which just means I did a lot of BLSI and uh, machine code writing and C++ writing to circuit boards and all that kind of fun stuff that you do in electrical engineering. Um, and then I graduated, but while I was in college, I did a lot of software development work because I had grown up doing software development. Um, got, you know, an Apple IIe way back when, went to computer camps, all that kind of stuff. So I got jobs in college doing software development. And when I graduated, I was like, huh, I think I'd rather just do the software development thing. So I started working in internal IT departments doing, you know, what was the thing at the time, which was client server based development, where you had, uh, you know, a Windows client you know, you built it using Visual um, Basic or one of those types of tools, but generally Visual Basic .NET stack with either a SQL server or an Oracle server backend. And that was sort of the way you did things until ASP.NET um, ASP came along. And so you started doing some web stuff. And so I did some of that as well. So, you know, that was primarily what I did. And then, um, you know, working through the ranks, became a manager, blah, 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 became a director of IT at a bio uh, um, a research, clinical research um, facility, contract research. And that once I became a director of IT, I sort of was still doing a lot of development. But then we had to, you know, I had to start thinking about commercial software and how we were going to make our processes better. So that mm. was a big part of the background. And so, um, I, that's when I got introduced to SharePoint. So the 2007 edition of SharePoint and I did the unthinkable, which is to 21 CFR part 11 certify our SharePoint environment so that we could keep research data in SharePoint. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, it was, uh, I was cray cray <laughs> for sure. It was quite the undertaking, but if you, if you understand the regs, it's not actually as hard as it sounds. So we did that certification. 2010 came out and um, we recertified. And I realized at that point that I was getting bored. And it was kind of why I kept switching companies. Or, you know, I would switch companies like every two years. And I realized that I'm getting bored because I need to constantly be challenged. And when you work in an internal IT department, you do the same stuff all the time, you know, and once you build it, yeah, you're in maintenance mode, but you're not building anything new. And I was so bored. Um, and so irony, 
the company that I, the consulting company I hired to help me implement SharePoint in our, our, you know, environment at the company I was working at, I went and worked for as a consultant. So I jumped ship, started becoming a consultant. That was 2010. And so I worked for a bunch of small firms, most notably Blue Metal, which was sort of a boutique-y, um, you know, Microsoft-based uh, consulting firm in the Boston, New York, Chicago area while I was there. And um, I met Bob German while I was working there, who is yep. the, you know, the OG Microsoft uh, guy and uh, became very f- good friends with him. And he and I in 2015 co-developed something we called the Widget Wrangler, which without knowing it <laughs> was totally the conceptual precursor, not that they got the idea from us, but it was, we were on the same path as the SharePoint framework. I brought a total irony. And so um, we released the Widget Wrangler in January of 2016. I, t- I started my public speaking journey at that point. We went to my first, Bob ha- invited me to go to the first SharePoint Framework Dev Kitchen, which is where I met Mark Anderson, whom I then three months later or four months later joined him. He was solo in a company called Simpraxis Consulting. And so I joined him. And so it was him and I, Simpraxis Consulting for a couple of years. And then we looked at each other and said, maybe we need some more <laughs> people in this party. And that's when we, um, through the speaking thing, because um, Mark absolutely sort of, you know, shepherded me into the, the bigger speaking roles instead of just being in, you know, community um, SharePoint Saturdays and, you know, <clears throat> uh, community things like the Boston user group and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, shepherd me to the sort of bigger venues. So started going to some of the bigger conferences and speaking at some of the bigger conferences. Um, and then we met Todd. Well, Mark already knew Todd, but I met Todd and we, you know, got Todd Clint and got a little bit more, you know, working together and stuff. And so I asked him if he wanted to join us and he did. And then um, my former coworker from Blue Metal, Derek Cash Peterson, wanted to leave Blue Metal and I was like, dude, come work with us. We're having a party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we added Derek and then we added one of our own clients. So similar to how I got pulled out of my company to join a consultancy, we pull, pulled Emily Mancini out of um, her company and she joined us. And then our, uh, and then this is where it gets totally incestuous. Our last member, Mike Gilronan, was my boss and the person who was the lead, one of the lead people introducing me to SharePoint back when I worked for that original company. Oh my goodness. Joined Simpraxis. <laughs> so that's how incestuous the whole group, the whole group is. But that's how, so that's my life story. That's how I sort of got here. So that's how I, you know, became part of the community and, you know, doing the speaking thing and, and really, um, you know, because that's one thing that some praxis we're sort of all about is embracing the community because we really feel strongly that by engaging in the community, we not only bring ourselves up our own knowledge by sharing knowledge and getting gaining knowledge from other people, but sharing our knowledge with others, you know, raises all boats. And we really, you know, appreciate that aesthetic. So that's, that's sort of how it all happened. Um, I'm sitting here listening to this and if I'm sorry, if in the background, if I was like distracted because I had two F-18 Hornets like fly over, oh. my, our, fly over our house. Like, I don't know if that was picked up by the microphone, but like it, it I heard the third something, day, but not the third yeah. day in a row they've done it and they both get low and you can kind of hear from a distance going, okay, they're, yeah, they're coming. They, I doubt they're going to be low because I li- it's, we have a Navy base kind of <laughs> close to us and all of a sudden it's like right over our house. Cool. It's like, Oh geez. So <laughs> just, um, but I, if I looked like I was like in, like infatuated with your story, I don't remember when we met, but I know years ago- exactly where we met because oh. it was one of those fangirl moments. It was at um, SP TechCon Boston. We were in the cocktail party uh, after the first day of sessions, and you were standing with Eric Shups and Mark was standing there and because I'm a dev person, you know, I had and had been working in SharePoint now for a little while, 
the way I sort of introduced myself to extending the SharePoint platform was using some of your educational materials from when you were at Critical Path and the books that you wrote, <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And I had attended a bunch of your sessions. Um, and so I knew of you, but had not met you. And Mark's like, oh, well, I know Andrew, I'll introduce you. And so he walked me up to you and Eric and I fangirled on you for like a few seconds. You probably don't remember that. I was like, blah, 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 blah. And your session it was so good. Uh, it, and Eric just stood there and like, what about me? He, My he chopped liver? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Eric. But it, I, I found it so funny because as I'm listening to your story, you know, as long as I've known you, I didn't, and I, I knew a lot of your history, but mm -hmm. I didn't know it like that. And yeah, you're going to see a lot of, uh, like corollaries to my history of how I got to where I am because I'm listening to your story. I'm like, Oh my God, that's how I did. Oh my God. That's how I did. Um, yeah. um, oh my God. Like this, <laughs> it's crazy that it was, there's so much stuff that's over, but uh, yep. yeah. And so, and one of the things you described too was how the company you're with right now, some mm -hmm. if you know, you guys look up there and you see this logo that Julie did for us, right. which I mean, yeah. everything has to have a logo, right? I'm I mean, next not an to artist, use, <laughs> what, but I mean, no, we're devs, right? There you go. We're trying to yeah. keep it real. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. No fancy font that's up there in the, yeah. oh, I don't know where, which way I'm oh, no, pointing, but the, up there for the colors. But Century Gothic right there. <laughs> the um, the logo that's above me, the right side of the, the right side of the logo, that's the, the purple and the green, that's your company's logo. Right. Yep. Um, you have to watch the second, the third episode to find out what the orange and the blue came from. Oh. Shocker, yeah. right? Shocking. But anyway, um, that's cool. So, you got into SharePoint 2007, 2007. Yep. When you got into it, were you doing much dev then, or was it mostly on the content no, and like it was, implementation side? It was implementation. We didn't want, I didn't want to do any dev on it because that made certification harder. Ah, uh, got it. Because then change control becomes even more complicated. What we right. were able to do with certification was to say, we can say that these are how all the different pieces of this platform are intended to work mm -hmm. and we can document how they are intended to work. And as long as we validated every time a patch was installed, that all of those things still work the same way, we could say that this platform was validated. And okay. so it was a very, I, we had a little bit of, you know, guardrails around what we were able to do because of that. But, Back in the on-prem days, you could also insert um, code on the page a little bit easier. So mm -hmm. the 2010 one, we would have been able to extend and be able to like say, hey, this page has a custom thing in it. And it's um, and we could certify that that page was going to behave differently. And this is what was in it and put change control on the stuff that's on that page. Whereas mm -hmm. if you were doing a farm solution, it would, would have been much more onerous to do that certification. So Got it. we didn't so, go that route. So when did you start focusing? When did you, when did you start doing more dev, uh, more development stuff, more custom dev on the SharePoint platform? Was that 2010? When, yeah. The 2010 okay. platform. <clears throat> All right. Yep. So you, when I and, joined KMA at the time. And when, and in terms of like background, so I'm trying to give people a little bit of context to like what your, because most, most people I get for you and I, you're mostly like your background, I would say, as people know you as a SharePoint developer. Yeah. Uh, and today that means SharePoint framework, but right. your history goes back doing, I presume farm solutions, yep. sandbox solutions, yep. add-ins. I never did add-ins. Add I skipped add-ins. Bless your heart. I was so um, brilliant. I decided to have a baby instead. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I literally, no, it, that's it. Actually, that's an interesting point. Uh, per, per, the uh, point because add-in model came out in 2013, and if we go back to the Wayback Machine when we would have the SharePoint conference, which was way more important when you had the on-prem releases, right? Because you'd have right. the 2007 version, or the 2010 version, or the yeah, 2013 the version. Cycle. And you'd have that three-year cycle and you'd want to go to that conference because you would need to know everything that was changing. You had, right. you had no run up to it really, unless you were really on the end, you had no run up to it. So you wanted to go to that conference because that's where you were going to learn everything you needed to know for the next two to three years. Yeah. And so I, um, 
I had my son in uh, September of 2012. And the SharePoint conference for the 2013 version was in November-ish, I want to say. Nope, you're right, and 2012, I, and, November 2012. Yeah, and I was on maternity leave. And so okay. I didn't go to that conference. So I had to, re and so Bob and Derek, who we, you know, we all work together at Blue Metal, they went, but I didn't go. And so they learned the add-in model. And when I got back, one of the things that Bob and I started talking about so much was that the add-in model, although cool, um, was hard. It just felt like a lot of overhead and a lot of heft hmm. when you could do this stuff in the page. And so then we started talking about, well, okay, if you can put JavaScript on the page using a script editor or content editor or web part, how do you make that a little bit more robust? How do you make sure that you have some sort of ALM around it? I mean, it would never going to be perfect, but what could you do? And so we yeah. started thinking about okay, what if we created a site collection with document library that held our code? Maybe not the most performant thing on the world, but for these small applications and with caching, it worked just fine. There was really yeah. no problem with it. I mean, certainly we could make it more robust, but for the smaller clients that we had, doing that seemed fine. So we would put the code in a, a library in a central site collection that we would maybe name even the CDN. And then we'd use the widget wrangler to load those web parts and whatever version we wanted of those web parts onto the page so we can make sure we have the dependencies and blah, blah, blah. So it, like I said, it is almost the same construct as the SharePoint framework. We just didn't know we were doing it until three months later when we went to Dev Kitchen and went, huh, this is just like what we did. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, that, okay, so you've done, so you skipped add-ins, which yep. was, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a male, but um, trust me, like you said, you had a baby during that. It felt like I did the same too when I was doing <laughs> um, add-ins, but um, <laughs> the, um, yeah, so, probably so, really painful. and so today, so I guess we're, who knows how long we end up doing this show, but let's just, right, right. now it's June of 2022. Yeah. So for some context today, you're, where where would you say your the majority of your dev is today? Your de, your dev life is today almost ninety. Well, it's a like ninety five percent writing client side code in the SharePoint framework or for Teams. Although I don't do a lot of Teams apps, we've had this conversation before. There's mm -hmm. just not a lot of call for it um, mm -hmm. in my consulting life. Uh, if they want an extension, they want it for not only. Teams, but SharePoint too. Teams is sort of the second part of that. It's right. there's not a lot of organizations that are Teams only, and they need Teams only extensibility. Uh, but I do do quite a bit of because I'm sort of in that. So my role at Simpraxis is sort of I call myself the CTO just because people like to know what your role is. But there's six of us. That means very little. Other yeah. than I'm probably the more most senior technical developer of the group. Um, you know, because of my background mm -hmm. and whatever. So, um, you know, if there's extents like integrations that need to be done, I'm going to be the one doing that. So for the most part, so that means I'm going to be using Azure resources and, and doing my, um, sort of the, what was the server side code there mm -hmm. now. And so that okay. for me, that just means I write C sharp because I came up through the client server model where all I was writing was C sharp. So right. learning JavaScript came for me in 2013. And then I learned a lot of JavaScript patterns, you know, kind of things and like learned how to write JavaScript. And then I learned how to write TypeScript. And you might even remember that you and I talked about like learning TypeScript, me learning oh, TypeScript. Yeah. It took me three days to yeah. make the transition. And yeah. it was like painful. And I give you all my notes of like, what, why, what are we doing? This doesn't make yep. any sense. Remember yep. that? Oh, anyway, yeah. yeah, so then I switched to TypeScript, which in hindsight, I'm so glad for, I like I prefer it significantly because yeah. it is so much more like C Sharp for yeah. me. Uh, but still switching back and forth between C Sharp and TypeScript is painful. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, yeah. what am I doing again? And so I do switch back and forth and you've mentioned it several times. I, I wanna, I, I think I want to say that what what I think it's been more recent that you've really seen Azure 
exploiting no no js as a platform do you know what i mean like i think when it first started the stuff that you would see would be based on the net framework or you know what i mean and then they yeah. really started embracing no after and i just haven't made the transition to writing uh, i think that that's code in node yeah, and I think that a lot of that too is just when you look at like when when Azure kind of came about. I mean, they were their target audience when it comes to developers are Microsoft developers, which is, I mean, yeah, that's those are .NET people, and right. so that makes the most sense. And now that I guess that now that, that market is saturated, and now that Azure is on the same, well, okay, this is debatable, but now they're on the same footing as the other public clouds. Yeah. Um, AWS GCP, then you're going to go look. They're going to you're going to see people asking questions about. Uh, you know, looking at it as like, I want to either build multi-cloud solutions or I want to be able to build the same kind of thing I do on AWS or I want to do it on Azure exactly. or vice versa. And so they were like, yep. well, now we have to support this. Now we have to support this. We have to support this and all these different ones. When you look Absolutely. at AWS and I think the majority of the code that runs on AWS is probably Java based. Um, yeah. And most of the startup stuff that you see over there is probably Ruby and, and Python. Mm -hmm. um, you look over at Google and I think that a lot of their stuff as well is, is a lot of uh, Java and Go and so I, I mean, I think that's just part of the nature of the audience, but yeah, I, I do. I they're just making sure that they want to be able to to give the same offering to no matter. You're not going to be hamstrung whichever platform you choose. A hundred percent, and I think it's great. It's just if you come from that, which is what I did, making that transition is just like a. Unless you stop and think about it, you don't really transition. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you're yeah. not you're not going to make that switch when there's no onus to necessarily making that switch. Right. So another question. Um, so today then, another, another way that people know you, I'm going to try and mm -hmm. tease out some more information on the bio from you, okay? Um, so another way that people would know you today is your involvement with a very popular uh, <laughs> library yep. that is that works both in Node and also works, is very popular in the SharePoint framework yeah. through the Patterns and Practices group, which is... PMPJS. And it, it, ironically, I was just going to bring it up because I was going to say one of the things, um, you know, as of today, one of the things that we'll be releasing in the next version of PMPJS is the tenant, um, SharePoint tenant based REST endpoints. Oh, and okay. the, the push for that is really coming from exactly what we just talked about, where people are starting to use a node based library to do server based things. Nobody yeah. ever needed the tenant APIs if you were just working in the client. It was just yeah. not something, why would you ever, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like your, your, your delegated permissions would probably not or shouldn't give you access to it anyway. So it would mm -hmm. not be something you should be doing. But now we're seeing this, we're seeing this migration or, or, or integration, right, of developers who write in Node.js for the server and thereby want an SDK mm -hmm. that's node-based to support all of these endpoints. So it's a real interesting shift from that perspective. So yes, PMPJS is, uh, I, I work with Patrick Rogers, who is a Microsoft employee, but he does this in his spare time and does an amazing job at it. He's a great person to work with and I'm uh, thrilled to, to be collaborating with him. So that's cool. definitely one of the projects. The other project I do um, is, I work regularly and have for the last, gosh, at least three years. Oh, I, I probably work with him every single day. It's um, the absolutely amazing one and only Stefan Bauer. Of, uh, he lives in Austria, Vienna, Austria. Um, he has a company he calls N8D Design. And he um, is just amazing at web development in general, like understands the that space better than anybody else I know, uh, mm -hmm. and is a marvel at HTML and CSS, like understands those uh, languages, and I think you could call them that, um, mm -hmm. really, really, really well. So we collaborate, uh, and I think, you know, my, well, my understanding of those platforms has increased exponentially but further because we work together he does all the design and writes all the html and css for projects that i do and then i do all the typescript development and orchestration of all of that and i think we can we can probably go faster than just about anybody with a really high quality level so it's really fun to work with him 
at any rate, one of the things that he and I built, again, as a community project, is he took the um, Microsoft Fluent UI design language and built a pure HTML and CSS implementation of that design language. And then I took that pure HTML and CSS implementation and built a React JS based component library for all, almost all, about 95% coverage of all the, the um, elements that he's built. So that's an open source project that he and I maintain on a monthly basis as well. So yeah, I got a lot of community, community work that I've been working. It's a lot. Yeah, that's uh, it's cool. fun. It's super fun. So, and then all the stuff you do on the Azure side is mostly just to support that, all of that work. The, the, yeah, the, the client, the, the consulting work that I do, you know, people need a uh, solution that would need like uh, eventing for their entire tenant or, you know, um, UI based just, solutions, you know, they need a custom solution that you know, writes to either database or um, SQL data or even list-based data, you know, list and library-based data in the SharePoint platform or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, we build those custom solutions using the SharePoint framework and then with some back-end stuff often, so. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. That's a good, that's I think a good that's who's a good, Julie. Yeah, that's a good who's Julie. Yeah. Well, Thank you very much for yeah. sharing your intro. Now people have some context about you and yeah, and next you're up. Hopefully yeah. I can do as well as as an interviewer. <laughs> I didn't do much of an interview on this one. That was pretty good. <laughs> Thing was pretty good. Well, cool. Well, then uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, as always, best way to hit you is through that uh, Twitter. Twitter yeah, handle our that Twitter you see handles there. right there. You can DM me, and and that's a good way. And we'll put some other things in the show notes, like yeah. LinkedIn and whatever, so you can find me there. Yeah, or drop a comment in the show notes to where you can actually see. Yeah, that too. Learn, yep. learn as well. Awesome. Well, with that, I want to ask everybody, hey, what did you think about this episode? If you can, let us know by dropping a comment below, uh, or to submit a topic and discuss on future. Uh, Cloud Dev Clarity episodes. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and smash that big red subscribe button so that on the below the video, so that you'll see when we publish more Cloud Dev Clarity episode videos for developers on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure and related topics. So until then, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>